Welcome to fall in Boise. Things are changing, colors are changing, the market is changing. How can you still be a savvy buyer? How can you still be a savvy seller? Let me show you. You're gonna need this. No, don't use this. This is my big fancy whiteboard. Not working. This one over here is working though. This is a regular old whiteboard. I've got an example here I'm gonna to explain to you. So rest easy. You don't have to be, you don't have to be, you can be confused by the numbers for now. This is a real life example of someone who was shopping for a house at $600,000, okay? The sellers had it listed for 30, 40 days. I think they're looking at a $50,000 price reduction. Go to 50 grand, now that's a lot of money. We're seeing price reductions still. Some sellers are dropping the house 10,000, 1%, 2%. When was the last time you got up the couch for a 2% sale? I think it's gotta be at least 5%. At 600,000, it's 30 grand, that's a lot of money. With no showings, no activity, I think it's going to be closer to 50. So how can a seller keep money in their pocket and incentivize buyers? And how can a buyer still get a deal? Well, part of it is going to be a rate buy down, right? Most buyers are getting loans, okay? You get the loan, you get a rate. In this case, it was 6.7%. Now, don't worry about what the monthly payment was, but talk to your local lender. I'll connect you if you need one. They're going to tell you what you can afford per month, which you can then backtrack into a purchase price. So keep that in mind for later. This one was 600,000. They were looking at, I think, a $50,000 price reduction. Instead of that, drop it 18,000. In this example, what happens? You save the buyer about $110 a month. Seller nets 582, buyer saves 110 bucks. Not bad, okay? Not bad. What's better than that? The rate buy down, okay? In this case, the net to the seller is still gonna be 582. So what happens is you take the $600,000, the buyer still pays that asking price, 600,000. But when they go to the bank, they say, look, seller, take your 18 grand that you were gonna give to me at a reduced price, we'll give it to the bank. The bank gives you a better rate. Okay, you can buy your rate down. You get pre-approved, it's at a certain rate. It somewhat depends on your credit score and your, what you have down in the market. In this case, 6.725 got down to below six, 5.8 and change. That saves the buyer 325 bucks a month. That is significant. And look, it's the same net to the seller. It's 582. So the seller did nothing different in both situations, but the buyer is super psyched. Now, why do we need to stoke the buyer? Well, if you're the seller, you want a buyer, right? Especially if the home's been on for 30, 40, 50 days. So do you care if the net's the same, whether the buyer pays less or more? Yeah, you want them to pay less. It's gonna be easier to find a buyer when you're offering that rate buy down. It's also close called in general like a closing contribution, right? So it's some way that the buyer gets helped from the proceeds from the seller. The seller ends up with a big stack of cash that gives them back to the buyer, right? The buyer's getting this loan, and typically they've already used all their down payment and their closing costs. They don't have enough money to buy their own rate down. You can always buy your rate down if you've got the cash. Who's got the cash? In this situation, the seller often does. So if you're a seller, consider that. Before a price reduction, make sure your agent, me, whoever, is talking to other agents on the phone and saying, look, we're doing this closing contribution. We can help your buyers buy the rate down. We can help. Now I did 3%, 18 grand, because 3% is kind of a common number. You might get limited depending on how much you put down, so talk to your lender and figure that out. You can buy the rate down a lot more if you have more down payment. 3% is probably a good, comfortable number to think about. So whenever you get pre-approved, Start shopping higher. Because remember, your pre-approval price, your, at your purchase price, is a factor of your monthly payments. In this situation, you just save $325 a month. So if you're approved at $2,300 a month, but you know you can get $300 off, now you're at $2,000. So you go up in asking price. Now I'm not telling you that to go get you a more expensive home. I'm telling you that as a buyer, because you can beat this market, right? You got people at $625 that are gonna be on the market for 30, 40 days potentially, right? Market's, market's kind of coming down. If they're gonna reduce the price or do something anyway, ask them for it now. When I got my first home, the seller paid my loan origination fee. I borrowed money and the seller helped me do it because they wanted to sell their house. That was the market of the moment. Now, this is all business. Don't be afraid to ask the seller for a closing contribution. If you're a seller, don't be offended when the buyer asks. I had a seller listed at 625 and we had an offer the same day for asking price with a closing contribution of 3%, that ain't bad. Now, first day I'd maybe consider 
not taking it. But after a couple of weeks, when you're faced with either a price reduction or doing it anyway, come in at asking, ask for some assistance, get a better rate. Now, these rates are higher than they were a couple of years ago. A couple of years ago, we were in the middle of COVID. The government was suppressing the rates to stimulate the economy. I don't know if we're going back to 2.7%. Side note on that, if you ever do buy something, buy anything, that's free money. So if you're at 5.8 and you can't get a rate buy down, fear not, you can always refinance in a couple years, right? You're not married to this rate. So you can get out of that rate if you need to, and the best way to do it is to ask the seller to help you first. If you have questions about that and you're a seller, if you have questions about that and you're a buyer, call me. Love you, bye.